Hey everyone, uh, welcome today. We're gonna let a few more people uh, file in here, but we're gonna get started here in just a second. I wanna be respectful of everybody's uh, time today. Uh, welcome again. What we have going on today is our uh, battery and system sizing. Um, my name is Daniel Moyer I'm with uh, Simplify Power, Briggs & Stratton, Energy Solutions. Uh, so this is a great topic. A lot of people um, want to know about sizing, uh, sizing of solar, but especially sizing of an energy storage system. So it's a great topic to jump in, um, understanding what does battery sizing look like for um, whole home backup? What does it look like for off-grid? What does it look like for just trying to do time of use or peak shaving? We're going to talk a little bit about sizing. We're going to start with some of the company history. I know if you've joined any of my webinars before, uh, we'll quickly run through that. We'll get into the sizing and then a little bit at the end, we'll talk about some of our other training opportunities. So again, welcome everyone. Um, a little housekeeping. If you have any questions during the presentation, go ahead and put them into the Q&A chat box. Uh, I, if you raise your hand, I can't, I can't respond to that. So just put the qu uh, questions in the Q&A. If somebody wants to pop in a question just to make sure they can see my screen okay and they can hear me okay. Um, somebody wants to put something into the Q&A chat and then we can get started. Not everyone start. Um... All right, well, there we go. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mike. I can see it. All right, Daniel, thank you. Again, my name is Daniel Moyer, sales support trainer here at Simplify Power, Briggs & Stratton. Let's start quickly. We're going to run through this really quickly. I want to uh, usually these, um, this particular webinar isn't that long. Or we're looking for about 35, 30, 45 minutes uh, and then close to an hour with questions. Simplified Power was originally started as OES Energy back in 2010. That's a long time ago in the energy storage uh, game. Back then, um, there were a lot of batteries coming to market that were mainly cobalt-based chemistries. So we were one of the first manufacturers to hit the market with a lithium iron phosphate battery. So that's what we've been making ever since then. Uh, it's the only thing we've ever made. Uh, Lithium iron phosphate chemistry is inherently safer. Um, it's less toxic. It's got less conflict minerals in it. So we uh, originally were founded with that idea that there needs to be a safer chemistry. 2011, 2012, we worked a little bit with the Department of Defense. Um, they originally didn't want to use lithium ion batteries at some of their forward operating bases that were using uh, d diesel generators, lead acid batteries. We approached them, said, look, we have a safer chemistry. We have a, um, a not cobalt-based chemistry. So they agreed to test it. Uh, they took our batteries out to the Aberdeen Proving Grounds, which is out there on the East Coast, and did some very rigorous testing, you know, high temperature, high vibration, high movement um, testing, and, and they liked it. They, we passed their tests. Ultimately, we did deploy with them. 2013, 2014, we continued to introduce new products. That's when we introduced our standard Phi battery, which has been one of our best-selling batteries ever since. 2015, 2016, we relaunched to Simplify Power. We introduced some of our access cabinets, which is what you see here in the picture. Did it continue to do some more uh, testing and work with the uh, Marine Corps this time, still Department of Defense. 2017, 2020, we've really been ramping up our manufacturing. We opened up a new research and development facility down in uh, Oxnard, California, which is just north of Los Angeles, right next to our factory where we assemble the batteries. It's, it's really cool that we actually assemble the batteries here in the States, and I've seen it. It's, it's really cool to see it going. One, I've been using this slide for a long time. One thing that you're not seeing on this slide is should be over here is we were acquired by Briggs and & Stratton. And some of the more recent things that we've been introducing is our new energy storage system. And I got a slide on that coming up. But it's been a big acquisition for us as we're combining uh, these companies and working towards uh, clean energy goals where you can use 
energy storage systems and generators to complement each other. Uh, you know, use a generator to run um, when solar insulation is low. And, and so that's what we're talking about today is sizing, right? If you size an off-grid system to run all winter long, well, it's going to be way oversized in summer. So how do we uh, augment or, or help out that off-grid system in the winter without having to oversize the system too much? And one of the reasons, one of the answers is a generator. And, and running a generator for just a couple hours, charge up that battery, shut the generator off, and save fuel, save runtime. So energy storage systems of any manufacturer, not just um, simplified power, can help um, solve a few problems. Um, you know, one of them is going to be grid intermittency. One of them is going to be saving you money. And one of them is going to be uh, helping out the environment. Again, we were founded on a safe product, non-toxic, non-hazardous cobalt-feed chemistry that doesn't have that risk of thermal uh, runaway, that uncontrolled fire propagation. You don't have to believe me, uh, my word, because we have some UL certifications that prove it. 1642 UL on the cell level, UL 1973 on the a battery module level, the battery itself, 9540 and 9540A on a system level. A Department of Transportation, UN 3480 and UN 38.3, those are ones that allow us to air ship these or ship the batteries on um, LTL or, or truck freight. For those of you in California, we are SGIP approved, so there's a lot of money to be um, got back to your customers on that. By being cobalt-free chemistry, we're able to source our raw materials more sustainably. We're proven. And I, this is something I don't want to just jump over really quick. We're one of the few battery companies that have been producing batteries longer than our warranty period. Right. So if we have a 10-year warranty on our battery, we've been around longer than 10 years. So we have warrant batteries that are outliving their warranties. And that's not something that a lot of our other uh, competitors can say that they've just come to market with their battery, yet it's not been proven. You know, we're deployed around the world. Um, we were worked with the military, the Department of Defense, uh, the Army, and the Marine Corps. Another thing I just don't want to brush over is that we have a business model that can demonstrate social impact and profitability can coexist. It's the so-called a uh, triple bottom line: people, planet, and profits. And we do give um one percent of gross back it's it's the idea program and you can look it up on our website if you want to know more about that we make them in the united states uh we're simple uh, we want to make it simple to integrate our batteries into any off-grid or on-grid situation as long as that piece of equipment that inverter that charge controller can meet the set points that i want to see on our batteries you can go ahead and integrate it um we want to create a, a new energy storage system, a new inverter that's simple to commission, simple to operate um, and drop in. I already see a question in the, the Q&A chat. Keep them coming. Uh, Eric asks, I assume um, there's a two-wire start or a dry contact with the genset. Absolutely. So our new energy storage system can uh, work with any generator, not just a Briggs and Stratton generator, any two-wire start generator can work and there are um, um, little modules too that can work with other generators that don't have that two wire start that we can um, more make it work. So I don't wanna go too deep into this. The, the topic today is sizing, but really quickly, I wanted to talk about some of our products. Um, here's some of our portable systems, the Jenny. Here's an example of some of our Phi batteries and amplified batteries. Really, this should have a white case now, not a, a black case. Uh, here's one of our access energy storage systems. This is a great product for uh, apartments or other situations where you can't hardwire something in. Um, there is our larger full access system. And then finally, here's some of our high voltage um, stack controller and some of our stacked batteries. I'm not the expert on high voltage. So if you have a situation where you want high voltage, um, let us know, um, and I let me know, and I can um, connect you up with somebody at, in our team that knows more about that. Here's the new product. 
we are super excited about releasing this. If anybody is coming to uh, RE Plus, it was used to call it Solar Power International. It's going to be in Anaheim next week. If anybody's coming to that, email me. My email is going to be at the end of this presentation. Uh, I'd love to meet you. We have, uh, you know, VIP tickets to some of the uh, after events or, or evening events. So let me know and we can connect you up. If you need an expo pass, you just want to go, let me know, email me and I can connect you up with that. What we're coming out with is a new 4.98 simplified battery. That's this one on the left. It's essentially the same chemistry, the same form factor, the same battery management system. Well, actually the battery management system is slightly improved that we've been using forever. We're pairing this with our new 6K inverter and we have a new energy track uh, gateway system. And really a lot of work went in more, you know, a lot more work went into some of this energy track and these control systems than go into some of the other pieces. So it's a really, uh, it's really that third leg of the stool. Keep in mind, we've always had the philosophy of a stacking system. So these inverters are easily stackable up to nine inverters. The batteries as well, you can stack these to meet the system size that you need. And let's get into that. We already talked about how energy storage systems can help save people money, help protect them from the failing grid, and help protect them, uh, help, help the environment. Uh, a lot of people don't, you know, go renewable. They go batteries to save money and to keep their lights on, to give them that distributed asset, give them that resilience. But uh, helping us move towards a carbon-free um, energy is nothing, nothing we shouldn't talk about and um, look at. So how do we save people money? One of them is peak shaving. And this is more common with uh, light commercial. It hasn't made its way really into residential that I've seen, at least out here in California. That's if any time during the day, your power consumption exceeds a certain kilowatt threshold, you get charged a peak, uh, a peak demand rate. Well, we can tell the energy storage system to discharge itself during those peaks and level out the, the curve. Another way that utilities are starting to raise our rates and charge us more money is time of use rates. And here in Pacific Gas and Electric, um, uh, California utility, people are getting forced onto this new rate, uh, whether you like it or not. So if it hasn't made it to your part of the country, I, I see it coming. Uh, that's if any, uh, at certain times of the day, usually like four to nine, five to 10, electricity is more expensive. Like three, two to three times more expensive. Well, we can tell the energy storage system to discharge itself during those time of use rates, flatten out the curve. And so you're not buying that expensive power. You're then uh, buying power from the grid when it's cheap, um, you know, after 10 p.m. or after 11 p.m. We'll get into this. Of course, we are not gonna let the energy storage system discharge itself completely to help peak shave or to help our time as use rates because we want to have a little bit of uh, excess to prevent for a, an outage. So imagine it, it's during the day, the battery's full, the solar is charged up the, the battery. Now four o'clock runs around, the sun is setting, the battery starts discharging itself. Well, by nine o'clock, maybe the battery is at 50% of its capacity. Maybe by 8.30 p.m., the battery's at 50%. Well, we're gonna tell the battery to stop discharging, stop helping flatten that time of use arbitrage because we wanna make sure that there's still a little bit of juice in the battery in case that night the power goes out, you wanna be able to make it through. So we size these systems and, um, to help save us money, but we always wanna leave a little bit left in the battery or maybe half as much of the battery so that if we have a, an outage in the middle of the night, uh, we're able to still power through. Um, you know, helping solar um, by storing energy when we need it, right? Everybody uses power um, at night, but there's no way to, um, we have to have these, these 
baseline nuclear plants or coal plants or natural gas power plants using uh, energy storage systems as a distributed asset um, allows the grid to um, maintain itself. And, and there's some opportunities here. Uh, demand response charges are coming in where you allow the utility company to take control of your battery and discharge it when the grid needs it. You not only get financially compensated for just being part of the, that program, but you get compensated for every kilowatt hour you output. So there's an opportunity to make money or, or increase your payback on some of these energy storage systems. Uh, one thing to, that comes to into sizing that we really have to understand is the C rate of a battery. What, so what's the maximum continuous rate at which we can charge or discharge its battery? Well, for our battery, for example, we have a 3.8 kilowatt hour battery. If it's a C over two rate, that means we can charge or discharge the battery at 1.9 kilowatts or half of its capacity. If it's a 75 amp hour battery at 48 volts, that would be 37.5 amps at 48 volts that you could charge continuously charge or discharge it. So when we're talking about sizing, we're going to look at these three things. We're going to look at grid connected homes, off grid, and existing systems. On grid connected homes, you can do a whole home backup. I don't personally like to do it that way. I like to see uh, critical loads, sub panels that are installed that allow the homeowner to not have to uh, worry about draining their entire battery because they left on all these luxury loads. If we move loads over to a critical loads panel, nothing outside of that panel is going to be powered when the grid goes down. Off-grid, we don't have that luxury. We have to power the whole home. We talked a little bit about how a generator can help that off-grid system. Existing systems we're going to talk about, it's a great opportunity for our batteries. Uh, if you got somebody that calls you up and says, hey, I got a bunch of Trojan T105, or I got a bunch of um, L16 batteries. Well, what does it look like to take out those old flooded lead acid batteries and pop in some of our bi batteries? It's, it's a real easy way to, to make some money, to drop in some batteries, build a relationship with the customer, and potentially upgrade a system with and uh, upgrade it with lithium or even new components. So, when it comes to sizing, there's two main things we have to think about. One is how much power might be consumed at any given moment, right? So when I mean power, I mean, if you would come into a home and you turn on your, your, your refrigerator's running, you got some lights on, and all of a sudden the dryer wants to start or your, your table saw wants to start, well, what's the max kilowatt? What's the max peak demand that you might encounter at any given moment? That's going to be really important when it comes to where that C rate that I was just talking about. So we need to understand that we need enough uh, power at any moment. So how many kilowatts does that inverter need to be rated for? How many batteries do we need so that we're not exceeding the max charge or discharge rate? So that's one, it's power. Two is energy. So we need to understand how much energy we're going to consume over a day, over two days, or, or maybe even over three days if we're really looking at days of autonomy. So power is measured in watts or kilowatts, whereas energy is measured in kilowatt hours. So let's understand uh, those two concepts and we'll, uh, we'll be off to the races. How do you figure out some of those um, figures? Well, if you're on a grid tied system, you can usually look at um, their utility bill. Some utilities allow you to download these uh, Excel files where it will list, list at 15 minute intervals, well, how much power in kilowatts was consumed at any moment and 15 minute intervals and potentially how much a uh, kilowatt hours was consumed over uh, a day. And that will help you size what size inverter you need with batteries and in size, uh, help you size how many batteries you need to make up that capacity. Using smart load panels like Lumen, like Span, um, there's a couple other ways to uh, use 
smart load panels to keep loads in the whole home backup universe, but drop those loads as the batteries start to get discharged or potentially drop loads as the power um, exceeds a certain threshold. This is a great picture of a, here's a solar edge over here. Here's the uh, access cabinet. Here's the span. And then here's a couple load panels. Remember, we can scale up. That's a great picture of what it looks like to scale up batteries. So let's do a couple examples. Say you come to a home, you see that they use 20 kilowatt hours a day. That's kind of a lot. I, maybe people want to put into the chat what they use. I'm, I don't have much. I don't have air conditioning. I don't have a lot at my home. So I'm usually around more like five to 10 kilowatt hours. These people use 20. And we see that at any moment, the max peak power demand is seven kilowatts. They need one day of autonomy. We know our battery holds 3.8 kilowatt hours or, or 3,800 watt hours, but we're not, we don't really want to discharge the battery all the way. Well, you can. We warranty our batteries for 100% depth of discharge, unlimited cycles for 10 years. Oh, that, and that may be this, the way you'd want to size it for 100% depth of discharge. Imagine you're doing a backup system or something where it's just kind of sitting there ready to be backed up, go ahead and size it for 100% depth of discharge. But if we're talking about off-grid, uh, we're talking about some you know, backup power for whole homes, let's size it for more of a 90 or an 80% depth of discharge. That way we're gonna give the most life of the battery after that 10 year warranty period is up. If you cycle these to 80% for 10 years, we expect at least, um, around 10,000 cycles. And if you're cycling it daily, 10,000 divided by 365 comes out to about 27 years. In this case, we're gonna size uh, for 90% depth of discharge, which means really we only have about 3.5 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. So what do we need to back this system up? 20,000 watt hours divided by 3,500 watt hours is around 5.8. So we need at least six batteries in this system to provide the amount of energy to provide them that one day of autonomy to get them through. And with that many batteries, you're easily going to be able to uh, meet that seven kilowatts of continuous, right? Because each battery is six times 1.9. That's 11,000 watts we could theoretically have done. So this number, seven number could have even been higher and we still would have needed only six batteries. Now, customer comes back and says that they now use 30 kilowatt hours. Maybe they started working from home. Maybe they had a kid. Maybe grandma moved in or a kid moved back in. Um, now, what do they need? Well, they also found out that maybe one day of autonomy really wasn't working for them. Usually in off-grid, I like to size for three days of autonomy. So now what are we looking at? We need 60 kilowatt hours of backup. Remember, we're only getting about 3.5 uh, kilowatt hours per battery. 60,000 watt hours divided by 3,500 watt hours is around 17. So we need 18 batteries in this case. This is what it would look like. I'm sorry, the, this, this slide is a little bit out of date. All of these batteries should now be in white metal cases. These are our five batteries. And these are the bus bars, our BV3 dash bus bars. But we've since got rid of these black ABS cases and now they're white, um, white case. So if we're looking at critical loads, which I always recommend, you know, we, we want to be able to pull out loads. What are we pulling out, right? A, a refrigerator. A mic, maybe a couple kitchen circuits, the, the computer, the internet router, uh, where maybe we want to pull out um, um, the furnace, right? If you have a gas furnace, you still need a, something to run the blower. You want to have heat, right? So we want to pull out our critical loads. And if you can't pull all of them out, right, let's think about using a smart load panel. We, again, we have to size for two things. What's the instantaneous peak demand and what's going to be the amount of kilowatt hours we need to get them through? In this situation, I would recommend an 80% depth of discharge. I would like to do more than one day of autonomy. 
But really, if you have um, a big enough solar system or you have a generator, you're going to be able to recharge that system every day. Let's do another exercise. Come out, we find that they're using 8.5 kilowatt hours a day. That's closer to what I use in my home with all of my loads. I'm, I'm bragging here. Uh, I see that we use five kilowatts this is your peak. You need one day of autonomy. When we're sizing for 80% depth of discharge, all of a sudden that 3.8 kilowatt hour battery, and really the usable capacity is closer to three kilowatt hours now. 8,500 divided by 3,000 is around 2.8. That means we need three batteries. So you can see that doing a, a critical load sub panel allows you to come in with a smaller size system. Make sure that inverter can handle um, and the batteries can handle that charge, that max discharge um, continuous rate, right? So if we have three batteries and each battery is capable of 1.9 kilowatts, we can continuously provide 5.7 kilowatts of DC up to that inverter, whether it's a Magnum, whether it's our new inverter, whether it's a Schneider XW, whatever the case may be, if that inverter is calling for all of that power, make sure you have enough batteries so that the inverter is never drawing more power out of those batteries and what they're capable of continuously supplying. Get into some diagrams. Here's some, um, some modules. We got some, what are these, IQ7 pluses from Enphase here. Here's our, this should really be an Envoy or um, an uh, AC Combiner 3 from Enphase. Feed it into our, our uh, main loads. Here's our breaker, here's grid. What do we want to look like when we add solar? Well, we can put in a critical load sub panel. There, there probably still would be an um, Enphase Combiner 3 here. But then we would have our combiner with critical loads. We would have main loads, non-backed up loads would be living over here. And here's our batteries and then the inverter. This inverter, say grid goes away, this inverter can create a clean enough sine wave that the micros are gonna latch onto it and start providing power to that solar arc. So backup, is great, but how do we save money? Well, we can save money again by reducing peak demand charges. When we do that, we're able to cut the curve using stored power. Something to consider, and I don't wanna to get too deep into it now, um, we're already coming up on the half hour mark, is by doing DC couple systems, it's a little bit easier to achieve some of these peak demand arbitrage and, and um, time of use arbitrage. Not all inverters are capable of doing this. Our new ESS inverter absolutely is. That soul arc that was in the picture absolutely is. And a lot of the bigger ones are, bigger named uh, inverters are. So what we want to see is what is that peak and how much uh, power in kilowatts are we going to need to be able to uh, eliminate that peak in, in watts? So we got to figure that out. And what's the amount of, consumption in kilowatt hours that's that's in this little green section here. We can use utility bills. Again, you can download these um, uh, files from your utility company that will list uh, what your kilowatt consumption was at, at 15 minute intervals and pull that out. It's this huge spread list. So you, you gotta um, sort through it and figure out what you need. So let's take an example here. We know you're getting charged 50% um, more whenever you go over 50 kilowatts. And the customer notices that they sometimes they get up to 27 or 75 kilowatts. So there's a 25 of kilowatts of peak that we need to shave off. So we understand that each of our batteries can do 1.9 kilowatts continuously, but they can actually do about four kilowatts for a 10 minute interval. So if we look at that peak and we see that it's less than 10 minutes, really we don't need 14 batteries, we could get away with seven batteries. But if we see that that peak is lasting uh, for more than just a, a few minutes, then absolutely we're gonna need to provide enough batteries where we can continuously provide that amount of watts that's being called for. Time of use, this is, this is much more common 
in residential. The, the peak one is a little bit more common in commercial. I do see peak coming over to the residential at some point. Again, time of use is when during certain times of the day, power is more expensive. It, it gets up to 67 cents a, a kilowatt hour. It is, it is absolutely insane. And a lot of times people have like your dishwasher can, you can set a delay where the dishwasher won't start until after this period is over. So it's, it's, inconvenient something you know if you got a family and you got to do the dishes you got to do your laundry because this is the only time during the day you got uh that's why is power is more expensive because everybody's coming home from work turning on the tv turning on the microwave doing stuff but well, we can program an energy storage system to discharge itself when power is most expensive and we can buy from the grid when it's the cheapest You got to look to see what your your time of use rate is in P Pacific Gas and Electric Territory. We actually you're allowed to choose whether you're on um, TOUA, TOUB, or TOUC, where the the window is maybe it's from three to nine or four to ten or five to eleven. You can choose what that time window is. So you got to look that up so that you know you're programming the system correctly, and always set the system to where. You're not going to fully discharge your battery to help time of use arbitrage because you don't want that to be the middle of the night when the battery is dead um, during an outage. So here's our example. Homes being charged twice as much power from four to nine. They know because of a year worth of data that they're using about six kilowatt hours during this peak time. So a battery bank will need at least two fives to be able to mitigate this. I would argue you would want at least four because you only want to discharge the battery bank about 50% and save the rest of that for the evening, at least. Off-grid, uh, if people are doing off-grid in the, the, this group here in this talk, I'd love to hear, uh, put it in, your, in the chat that, I, you know, go off-grid. But it, it's definitely where I um, live up here in um, Humboldt County in Arcata, California, where uh, off-grid was really where it got started. Um, I worked for a company called Sunfrost, where we made DC powered refrigerators for a long time. So I've um, doing off grid for a long time, and eventually I went over to uh, Grid Tide. But there's a lot of people out there off grid, and there's a lot of people out there with lead acid batteries that they forgot to water, that they can only discharge down to 50%, and they're failing on them. Let's think about replacing those batteries with lithium chemistries and maybe the safest of the lithium chemistries lithium iron phosphate so we really got to think about um how many batteries they have in the system how much energy they need to provide really i want to see an 80 percent depth of discharge as long as you know if that radian there and these outback charge controllers these absolutely can meet the set points that are required to treat our batteries correctly go ahead and drop in them in um, on old Magnum for sure, old Morningstar, a lot of that equipment, as long as you can get those custom set points, change them from the lead acid battery profiles to a lithium ion battery profile. And we have integration guides that help you program all this. You can go ahead and drop them in. Uh, this is a, a great picture of what our new inverter looks like. You can absolutely use our new inverter off-grid. It is warranted for off-grid. A lot of other people don't warranty their stuff for off-grid use. We absolutely can. Here's some um, Tygo TS4F. Those look like F rapid shutdowns. We got a couple of our Boss cabinets. These hold 12 batteries each. Here's a midnight solar combiner. And here's the loads to this off-grid cabin or an off-grid mansion. I've seen them before. What do we have to do when we look at off-grid? We got to look at what their loads are. Uh, and see how much power they may consume at any given moment and how much kilowatt hours or energy they consume over the day. We come out, we find that your home uses around nine kilowatts peak of power. And you use about 16 kilowatt hours a day. We want to account for some inefficiencies. So let's add 10%. We're only doing one day of autonomy. I don't like that. I'd rather see it be two or three, but we know we have a generator, so we're okay. How many batteries do we need? around six, right? 
18,000 divided by 3,800 is around six or 5.92 batteries. So when we're doing our batteries in off-grid, it's important to have a few advantages. One, we can always come back and add to a system, expand. And that's not very common with a lot of our other competitors that you could come back out. And I always say max you probably want to do is two to three hours. I mean, two to three years uh, before you don't want to add to a battery. If you are going to add batteries to an existing system, make sure that the new batteries and the old batteries are within one volt of each other before you connect them up. And it's important to understand that if you have a battery that has 10 year warranty and it's been sitting there for two years and you go to add new batteries, those new batteries in effect are only gonna have an eight year warranty. So I hope I explained that correctly, but the warranty of new battery reverts back to the oldest, the battery, the oldest battery in the system's warranty. Um, let me know if that didn't make sense in the, in the comments, I'd love to see it, but um, we can we can use these building blocks. So if you got a homeowner that lives off grid and and maybe they realize they need more capacity, we can go ahead and add it. Um, our batteries have a much quicker charge or discharge rate. Remember, I said C over two. Lead acid batteries are like C over twenty or C over ten. And if you're really pushing a lead acid battery, maybe C over five, but you're losing a lot of capacity. So we're able to charge our batteries up much quicker. So that if you got a small solar window or you really want to run that generator at full tilt, you can get those batteries charged up. We're, we're getting through it. We're almost to the end. We're going to run through a couple more examples of what it looks like to replace batteries. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about training and then we'll jump into Q&A. Um, when you're talking about replacing old batteries, you know, some of the pieces of equipment that you have in an old off-grid cabin maybe aren't capable of using the modern communications that are available on new batteries. That's why we make a standard Phi battery and an Amplify battery. The standard Phi battery doesn't have communications. It has a much more simple battery management system and internal analog. That doesn't mean that the Amplify, which does have digital communications, is any better. Why would you go out and buy a more expensive Amplify battery when you got a, a, a site that has equipment that can't communicate? Go ahead and just buy our standard Phi batteries. It's still the same chemistry. It's still the same form factor of those cylindrical cells. Um, so think about the communications and the compatibility of that. Lead acid batteries, really, you only want to discharge about halfway, maybe a little bit more if you want to push them, maybe less if you don't want to push them as hard. So you have a much more usable capacity in a lithium ion battery. There's a, a more efficient round trip efficiency. So if for every kilowatt hour you put into a lead acid battery, how much do you get out? Not as many, right? Maybe 80% of that or, or less. With the lithium ion battery, you're gonna get, for every kilowatt hour you put in, you probably get 0.9 or 0.95 or maybe 0.97 out. Make sure that equipment can meet those custom charge settings. Really, one of the ones that you might are probably gonna have the hardest time getting is the low battery voltage cutout. On our batteries, if it's a 48 volt battery, we wanna see 48 volts is when that battery uh, is cut off. That's 0% state of charge on our batteries is 48 volts or 24 volts. So some of the other, some pieces of equipment have um, their low battery cutout can't be set high enough, if that makes sense. A lot of these older pieces of equipment are meant for lead acid batteries where you can discharge them a little bit lower than their nominal voltage. We have some great calculators. I'm not gonna jump into it now, uh, but check out our website. This will tell you, uh, you tell it what you got. It'll tell you what you need in our new batteries. This is a, gr a great picture. These actually look pretty clean. These look like T10, uh, no, these look like L16s, maybe T105s, some, um, some Trojans. Uh, so what do you have? You have, well, no, if they're 300 amp hour, there's gotta be um, L16. So you got six, 
volt batteries, 300 amp hours each, and you got 16 of them, right? So in my head, I do six times 300, um, divide it, and then that's 1800 divided by 16. That means there's 28 kilowatt hours of storage here if you were to drain it all the way. But if we only drain it 30%, because we want to keep a 70% depth of discharge or 70% state of charge, really, you don't have a lot of usable. What do you have? You have around 8,000, 8,600 8, watt hours of usable capacity with a lithium ion battery with our LFP batteries, you can discharge them a lot lower and have a lot more usable capacity. So with ours, if you were to cycle it down to 80%, you'd really only need three batteries to replace this entire bank. It's pretty incredible. A couple things. A lot of people in off-grid, a lot of people even in on-grid are used to doing um, always parallel. You never wire our batteries in series. And if you are to wire our batteries in parallel, there's two ways I want to see you do it. One is you have conductors of the same gauge and the same length going up to a common terminal block or a common bus bar or um, a, a common combiner like that midnight solar combiner. That way there's no impedance in the system and every battery is working just as hard as the next. We do let you daisy chain batteries in parallel, right? Daisy chaining is when you go positive, positive, positive to the piece of equipment and then negative, negative, negative from the opposite end to the piece of equipment. It's still in parallel, but we're not doing the uh, conductors of the same gauge to, this, to an exact spot. We let you get away with this. These are our, our, our bus bars. We have them where you can do uh, th sets of three or sets of two. You can do custom bus bars. I've seen a lot of different ways of doing this. Um, the, the idea here is that we want to make sure each battery is working just as hard as the next. Otherwise, you're going to get some imbalances in there. So if you use our bus bars, go ahead and daisy chain. If you're going to do our phi batteries, do not do that. Notably, with our new uh, uh, 4.98 Simplify battery with the new Briggs & Stratton ESS system, we are allowing you to daisy chain using 4 aught but up to four batteries. Any more than that, you're going to have to start thinking about a combiner. And then always keep in mind that you want to you wouldn't want to do this. You see how the negative and the positive are, are coming off the same side? You'd want your negative over here coming off so that negative is coming in on one side of the bank, positive on the other. So we're wrapping up here. I know I went a little over time, but with Briggs and Stratton and, and Simplify Power, um, we got a big release party. It's going to be next week at, in Anaheim. If you're going to Anaheim, let me know. If you want to go to Anaheim, let me know. I can get you an expo pass. If you already are going, we, we have these uh, VIP passes to some events we're sponsoring. Briggs & Stratton has an, an amazing um, opportunity. I, for whatever reason, it didn't pop up here. I'm sorry. There's three ways to access the site. You can uh, text um, a number, and I'll get that to you. I'm so sorry it's not here. I'm just going to skip over this. You can email. You can go to... Um, or go to uh, simply Google poweracademy.com. Uh, and Nathan, if you're in, if you want to put in the, the Q&A chat here, what we text or, um, and so I can mention that verbally here to people. But we have in-person trainings. We have, or go ahead, Nathan. Yeah, Daniel, give me just a second. I'll type it into the chat. Yeah, thank you. So so Nathan um, is on, Heston, he's on the, the line with us. He's one of the other sales support trainers here. He's going to be, we're going to both going to be in Anaheim. Please come by and we're going to have this huge booth. It's our big release party to the industry that we're coming out with. Um, but back to Power Academy. Power Academy has been up for a long time. There's a lot of resources for generators. There's now a lot of resources for our energy storage system. Uh, please check it out. Another thing I want to plug really quickly is that if you are on this call and you are doing our... Um, installations, please reach out to me to join the Elite IQ program. I'll put you on our maps. So if somebody comes to our website, 
They can find you. We'll send you business. We'll give you a $25 cash back per battery you install. There's a photo contest, uh, you know, direct level two tech support. Although our level one tech support is, is still um, better than most people. We always pick up the phone. So let me know um, if you want those hall passes, you want some VIP passes, email training at simplifypower.com. If you got any photos of systems that you love that you want to maybe be entered in for that $250 photo contest, go ahead and email them to training. Uh, there's the email again. Um, so that's all I got for everyone. Let's um, Let's jump in to some of these um, questions. Um, Scott's asking email, there it is right there, training at simplifypower.com. Um, Zach is asking, I have my technicians trying to program simplify batteries for peak shaving, how complicated is it? Well, you don't program the batteries to peak shave, you program the solar or you program the Schneider or you program our new ESS. And it is um, easy. A lot of our tech support is, is well-versed on how to program all these systems. So I would say it varies depending on the piece of equipment, how complicated that is. A lot of people make it easy through our apps. I know on our new ESS, through that Energy Track app and that gateway, it's, it's in the phone where you, the homeowner can actually adjust it. That's how easy it is. Um, Uh, Drew is asking, um, yeah, so there is, so uh, with this, really in order for us to, uh, Drew is asking about some of these um, connected solutions or these demand response programs that allow, this is coming down the road. There is going to be an opportunity for energy storage systems to help the grid maintain its stability. And there's going to be an opportunity for people that do that to make money. You know, they just extended the tax credit. Uh, to 30% for the next 10 years. They just um, made it to where you get some money if you need to do a service upgrade. They just made it to where um, you can install storage without solar and still get the tax credit. So there's there's opportunities that are coming along. Um, nice to see you're not using a lot of power there. Um, uh, can you do some ancillary service based on the battery management BTM on the ESS? Um, I'm not sure what you mean there, Inku. Um, uh, Tim O'Brien's a solar edge inverter with these batteries. Would that system need AC coupled hybrid inverter to get the solar inverter to operate with the batteries? Yes, right? So solar edge, um, well, there's the store edge, I think only use, works with their batteries. Um, but if you, had a, you came out to a, somebody's house, they had solar edge, you could AC couple that solar edge inverter to our new ESS or to a, to a Solarc even. Um, you, the, the optimizers on the solar edge are not compatible. So if you didn't do that, you'd have to get up on the roof, take down all the optimizers, put in like rapid shutdown probably to meet code, and then you could DC couple it. Uh, any data life, uh, Benito's asking, any data life of the battery that is on that is standby or trickle with very little usage. I think what you're asking there is how much does the inverter consume like parasitic draw on the inverter? That's going to depend on the inverter. Um, I've seen our new inverter anywhere from 15 watts to 50 watts, maybe a little bit less. Um, uh, uh, Drew's asking, vehicle the grid that new gateway the gateway is and, and the firmware updates that we have in coming down the pipeline is what's going to enable this vehicle the grid vehicle the grid is is going to be huge and that's something we're definitely on the roadmap right out of the gate we're not offering that but that gateway the communication system it has to be uh pushed a firmware update that's going to allow uh your chevy bolt allow that ford lightning to help be your battery in your home. A lot of jurisdictions aren't even permitting it. I don't even know if the cars are, are allowing that. It's it's coming and we're going to be ready for it. Um, and there's no reason why you couldn't do that. Um, you know, uh, 
uh, Glenn has mentioned tankless water heater, you know, so if you're, um, that's absolutely something you'd want to back up. The tankless water heater still needs electricity, to, I think, to fire that pilot light. Um, uh, everybody, um, I, I should have mentioned this earlier, Susan's asking, um, and she's probably not here anymore. I, every, everybody who's registered and everybody who attended this meeting is going to get uh, a, um, a copy of it. Uh, automatically emailed. Awesome um, to hear about Glenn is mentioning uh, we're sending 144 of our batteries to an off-grid hospital um, in Haiti. I love to hear about these uh, systems. Steve, I'm glad that you're doing off-grid. It's, it's good to know the old school off-grid people. Um, um, Somebody's asking, are there any AHJs authority having jurisdictions or utility restrictions with the maximum regards with maximum size of kilowatt hours of battery? Absolutely. Um, I know in, and it's going to change. Uh, energy storage is still kind of a new thing and uh, inspectors don't know what they're looking at. You're going to have to help educate them. Here in Los Angeles, for example, there's a requirement where you can't install more than 20 kilowatt hours of storage at one location at someone's house. That is why we built our new Simplify 4.98 batteries as, as a 4.98 kilowatt, because you can get right up to that 20 kilowatt hour threshold and not exceed it. With other people, they have much bigger blocks, like a Tesla Powerwall, for example, is like 13.5 kilowatt hours. So you can't do two, because then you'd be at 26 kilowatt hours. So there's, I would look, you know, look for your local jurisdiction and check with them before you start bidding projects. Uh, yeah, sealed batteries are definitely um, exciting. Um, absolutely, you can do 100% depth of discharge. Um, with, uh, Eric has mentioned that you do need to be very careful with older charge controllers, absolutely. Uh, a lot of these older charge controllers uh, have like equalization um, um, modes or equalization um, charge profiles. And sometimes it's not able to disable that equalization. I would always set that equalization voltage the same as the absorb voltage. So if ever um, your um, for whatever reason, it goes into equalization, it's still not going to break the, let the smoke out of the battery, and it's just going to be like an absorb charge. As asked, Zach is asking about comparison charts. Email me, I'll get you one. We are having an upcoming training where all we talk about is sale, selling this stuff, and we definitely do have some uh, competitive comparison charts. Um, having Emily's asking, have an off grid with solar generators, does this void the warranty on the gen as it would be a prime power? That's a great question. Um, a lot of generators are standby generators, right? They're not meant to be um, a continuous generator. And um, there are actually, I just learned this in California. I don't believe you're the California Air Resources Board. Uh, uh, don't, you know, I'm not sure on the laws, but you're not even allowed to have nothing but standby. But Briggs, I, I do. And now that I'm learning more about it, they actually do create some inverter some uh, generators that are rated as um prime power or or as continuous right if an invert a generator has a thousand hour warranty absolutely you're going to want to be using the energy storage system to reduce those run times um um we can definitely uh yeah, if you talk about the, the calculations of that new battery and the inverter, um, we can, uh, again, you know, what's what's 4.98 times 0.8, the usable capacity of a 4.98 kilowatt hour battery is around four kilowatt hours. The We hope to be, Zach, we hope to be shipping the new batteries and new energy storage system like this week or next week. That's how close we are. Um, uh, we're working on connected solutions. Uh, 4 
can be used on the new batteries, the new Simplify 4.98 batteries, um, up to four batteries, four watt between the batteries, two watt up to the piece of equipment. Uh, Steve, email me. We have pretty low, uh, our, our lead times are pretty low, depending upon what you need. And a lot of our distributors like Solagents, like CEDs are stocking this. Uh, Daniel, just to yeah. give you an update on the shipping, um, our first units went out yesterday. Yep, really excited about that. That's going to be, um, it, it's the start of something great. So if anybody is um, uh, doing them, if anybody's got some on their way, send us pictures. We'd love to um, to talk about it and, and go for them. Um, if anybody wants to look at... Um, um, more of that, email me and we can go from there. Uh, thanks everyone. Um, Nathan, did you have anything to add? Well, if people are interested in signing up for more trainings through the Briggs and Stratton uh, Training Academy, they can search for Power Academy and Briggs and Stratton, or they can simply text the number, um, the word learn to 33988. Yep, so there it is. 33988. Yep. Um, text the word learn. We won't spam you. That'll just send you a link directly to the training website. So yeah. once again, that's the word learn to 33988. Yeah. Thank you.